Hello and welcome. In this video series, we're going to talk about solving completely coupled FOLSDEs, which stands for First Order Linear Systems of Differential Equations. So let's recap. So far, we've looked at a general system of two ODEs, where in general, we, we have no restriction on our functions, except that dx dt can potentially depend on x and y, and dy dt can also potentially depend on both x and y. Uh, in general, these types of systems can be difficult, if not impossible, to solve using an explicit analytic and analytical technique. So solving for x of t and y of t often requires some sort of integration, and these can be pretty difficult to solve. This is especially true when the system is nonlinear, which many models are. So for example, the Lotka-Volterra model, which is used to model predator-prey relationships, uh, is nonlinear due to the interaction term r times f. So this is uh, what Locke and Volterra created or came up with this model that seemed realistic, where the r represents the prey and f represents the predator. Think rabbits and foxes. Um, dr dt equals a r minus b times r times f. df dt equals negative cf plus d times r times f, where a, b, c, d are all positive real numbered constants. So the parameters, a, b, c, and d, we put negative signs in front of them whenever we want that term to have a negative effect, but a, b, c, and d are all going to be positive numbers themselves. So this interaction term, this rf here, is what makes this nonlinear. And the way you can think about that is it's the product of two dependent variables, and it's as if we have a dependent variable squared. Uh, I know it's not totally true because r and f don't have to have the same values, but they're values of the dependent variable. So what can be said about this model? If we can't solve it, what can we say? Where r is the number of prey and f is the number of predators. Well, we can do a little analysis, like say, what happens if there are no prey? So that means r equals zero. Well, if we plug in zero for r, the negative brf term goes away, and the ar term goes away as well. And so we get dr dt equals zero. For df dt, if we put in zero for r, then we get df dt equals negative c times f. Well, this is a scalar multiplier of f, meaning that we have ultimate decay in the fox population, and that means the predators are going to die off. In the absence of predators, when f equals zero, well, if we put in f equals zero into dr dt, we get dr dt equals a times r. And since a is a positive constant, that means the prey are going to thrive. They're going to continue to increase in population size. They're going to just basically reproduce. Um, as, as we know rabbits do. df dt, if we put in 0 for f in both terms, we get df dt equals 0, which makes sense. We should have no rate of change in the fox population. When r and f are both very large, the non-interaction terms are small, since ar and negative cf are relatively small in comparison to the rf terms. So if you imagine r and f are really, really large, and you look at this model, then the AR term will be a lot smaller than the negative BRF term, and the negative CF term will be a lot smaller than the DRF term. And so we can say that these models are just approximately, at least for the moment, uh, equal to just the interaction terms. And that means the prey are going to die off because the predators are really eating them, and the predators are thriving. You can see that's positive D times R times F. And then eventually, you know, this is not permanent, but once once the prey die off, then these interaction terms can start to become small again, and then we're back to one of these two scenarios. When we start to lose prey, the predators die off, and so there's this really complex interaction. So we can still obviously conduct a pretty powerful analysis of the system we just did. Um, this is why Lotka and Volterra found these models powerful. And we can also do one other thing, which we haven't described yet, which is to talk about the equilibrium points of a system. Okay, so for a system of ODEs, for, for the whole set of populations to be in equilibrium, we would expect that both of the rates of change are zero. So in other words, if both dx dt equals zero and dy dt equals zero, what ordered pairs, x and y, will cause that to happen? So here I've just replaced r with uh, x and f with y, just to make this a little bit more mathematical. And to find these equilibrium points, 
all I really have to do is set the rates equal to zero and solve that underlying system that I get. So here if I set dx dt equal to zero, I'm going to get 1.7x minus 1.1xy. And here I'll get zero equals negative 0.8y plus 0.6xy. Now we can solve this method using some sort of substitution. Um, this is a nonlinear system, so they, they can get pretty challenging to solve. But one thing I can do is I can factor out an x from the first equation, and that leaves me with 1.7 minus 1.1y. And I can do something similar for the second equation. I can factor out a y and make this y times negative 0.8y, uh, excuse me, negative 0 0.8 plus 0.6x. Now when I solve the first system, I'm going to get two solutions. I'll get x equals 0 uh, because we have a product here. So if x is 0, then 0 times anything is 0. And for the second one, I'll get 1.7 minus 1.1y equals 0. And so that's going to give me y equals 1.7 7, negative 1.7 divided by negative 1.1, or just 1.7 divided by 1.1. And that's the same thing as 17 elevenths. Now this is an or statement here. This means any either of these two facts could be true in order for the, the dx dt function to have a zero rate of change. Um, the second equation, if I solve that one for x and y, here I'll have either y equals 0, because again, 0 times anything will give me 0, or if that second factor, negative 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6x equals 0. And so that will give me x equals uh, 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.6. And that comes out to about 8 sixths, or comes out to exactly 8 sixths. So how do we couple these equations together? Well, in the first equation, if x is 0, that will work. So our eq points are going to be x and y. So for the first equation, either of these two things can happen. x can be 0 or y can be 17 elevenths. So if x is 0, well, now I need to ensure that the second equation is also equal to 0. And that's going to occur when either y is 0 or if x is 8 sixths. But if x is already 0 up here, then x can't be 8 sixths as well. So the only way for both equations to be in equilibrium is for x to be 0 and for y to be 0. So you can check that. If you plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, you get uh, 1.7 times 0 minus 1.1 times 0, which is 0 and negative 0.8 times 0 plus 0.6 times 0, which is 0. The other way for this to happen is if in the first equation, for the, the other way for the first equation to produce a 0 rate is if y is 17 elevenths. Okay, so if y is 17 elevenths, that'll make the first equation 0. The second equation will only be 0 if y is 0, so that can't be true because we're saying y is 17 elevenths. But it can also still be 0 if x is 8 sixths. And if you plug in 8 sixths for x and 17 elevenths for y, you're going to get dx dt is 0 and dy dt is 0. So there are actually two equilibrium points for this system, and it's because it's nonlinear that this happens. Now, this can become kind of tedious solving these. I, I thought it would be valuable just to see how one would compute these algebraically. But we can also solve a system like this with Wolfram Alpha, which Wolfram Alpha can do that heavy lifting for us. So all I've input into Wolfram is 0 equals 1.7x minus 1.1xy, comma, 0 equals negative 0.8y plus 0.6xy. And if I scroll down far enough, I'll see the two solutions. y is 0, x is 0. That matches our equilibrium point that we found first. And then the second one, x is equal to 4 thirds, y is equal to 17 elevenths. Well, it's the same thing as 8 six. Therefore, we found the exact same solutions. There's also an option to press approximate form if you want to see what these come out to as decimal approximations. 
So uh, 17 elevenths is about 1.55 and 4 thirds is about 1.33. So what does this mean? Well, this, this means that the system is in equilibrium. That is, if both populations are ever zero, well, there's not going to be any change in the populations because there's no reproduction, there's nothing happening. And also when x is 4 thirds and 17 elevenths, we can sort of think about this as kind of a, a steady state. A steady state. And that just means that these two population sizes, it doesn't mean that the species are not interacting and that there's not consumption of the, the prey by the predators, but this is a steady state in that uh, the, the number that, that, that of rabbits that die off is equal to the number of rabbits gained, and the number of foxes that die off is equal to the number of foxes gained, and so it appears that the system is, is not creating any changes in X or Y, the populations are still changing, but there's a net zero net change. And so we can think about that as a steady state.